Mongo Jake here with another Big Power Electric Blaster review. Yeah, these just keep on coming. But this time we're going to take a look at the 509. This is one that I was actually kind of hyped for because, well, you already know I love drum fed blasters. They are something I absolutely love. I do prefer drums of high capacity over mags. Mags are nice to change out and they have their place. But a big drum that you can just keep topping off is very, very nice to use, especially. Just, you know, in my opinion. And personal preference does matter. So, you may be somebody who loves mag-fed blasters, and when it comes to that, Big Power Electric's got lots of them. And I did find a couple I liked. But I was really looking forward to this, I guess, well, I was expecting to be their premium series, because these all shared a different color scheme, which happens to match with my colors. <laughs> so, kind of happy about that, too. Of course, Mongoose uh, team colors are orange, white, black, with a touch of gray. Well, it's more more white, but still, I'll take it. But the 509, what it is, it's a 30 round drum fed semi-auto flywheel blaster that has a independent rev trigger. It comes with a lot of stuff as is usual for big power electric. You get the scope. This does not have a stock attachment, does not have a muzzle attachment. It has the one top rail that the, I already have that mounted on, which is indeed Nerf compatible. You can take this off, use it on Nerf. You can use Nerf accessories on this one rail here. And it does even have the same uh, little nub that you lock into place there, just like anything else from Nerf that you've grown to be used to with the N-Strike series. It has the same drum change out that I really loved on their other drum fed blaster I've already reviewed. And you just simply push the button, slide the foregrip forward, and then you can pop the drum out to either top it off easily, or if you can get your hands on a couple of these, swap them out. And then place it back in and lock it in place. Very nice, kind of uh, X-Shot Turbo Advance-esque. And I'm fine, with, I'm fine with companies taking design cues that they like from others and making it their own. You know, in this case, they made it a very nice drum swap. Now, this one comes with a price tag of $59.99, which is a little higher. So my expectations are a bit higher, and my my critique is going to be a little more harsh. So bear that in mind. At $60, this is, you know, a high price for an off-brand blaster. Now, I do believe Big Power Electric's not going to be an off-brand for too long. I, I could envision... Few years down the road, we're going to speak of them just like we would say X Shot. Because I do think that they're they're definitely on the level of some of the name brands. And I'd take it over Elite 2.0 any day. But getting back to the 509 itself, so it is a 30 round drum fed semi auto flywheeler. So far, performance has been solid on everything that Big Power Electric has sent. Now, standard operation, you. Pull the rev trigger, let it rev up to speed, and then you can fire. Now, this brings me to a point. As you see there, there is a couple of hiccups. So, we're getting to that. I made it, you know, let's see, two, four, six, eight shots before a hiccup. And that has been pretty, pretty typical. There'll be one, two, three, four skips and what happens is it seemingly, the rotation mechanism, if you try to be careful, like I was there, I'll do it again. All smooth there. No issues whatsoever. And that has been the case. You know, sometimes if you're real deliberate with your trigger pull, you can make it work. It doesn't feel necessarily the smoothest, and it does have hang-ups. So we're gonna touch on that right now because the rotational mechanism in this, it all their internals have been very simple. And while I haven't I haven't shown any mods because I don't tear them down before my review's over. And then then I'll go have my fun modding afterwards down the road. But this one has the hiccups in it as it rotates. Not a deal breaker in and of itself. Now another thing, when I put it in the chronograph, as I just mentioned a moment ago, performance has been solid for all of theirs. This one is, is actually an exception to that. I'm, I'm barely averaging 70 feet per second, and it's not consistent. 
because I have noticed in my chronograph sessions, you know, I'll I'll fire 10 drum worth through the chronograph. That's 300 shots. And I was noticing towards the end of my chronograph session, there was a lot of inconsistencies and I could hear it in the motors and I actually was smelling the motors. You know, I'm not I'm not sitting there sniffing the blaster. It, you could actually smell it in the air, the, you know, hot motors. So there is an issue there. And by the end of my 300 shots for chronograph testing, I was having shots go all the way down to 50 and then up up to the middle and upper 70s. So sometimes it would be great, sometimes it wouldn't be. And I was using newish darts. It was not that. I wasn't using their darts. Mostly I was using waffle tips. But with a mixture of waffle tips, accuracy strikes, you know, and now you also hear, I've, I fired it enough that it's developed a kind of annoying squeak on the rotation. <laughs> That's something that popped up after I started using it. Now, yes, I could tear it down. I could lubricate all of the rotational parts and that'll go away but without tearing it apart you're stuck with this I, I'm I am nitpicking I am but this is as of right now this is their most expensive blaster so I'm gonna hide it I'm gonna hold it to the highest standards which is what I think you should do the more expensive a blaster is the more you nitpick it that's how it should be if you're a reviewer looking at something so I might seem harsh but it has the least consistent performance. It has the lowest overall outside of the uh, 501 pistol. Outside of it, this has the lowest overall average. I was only averaging 69.1 feet per second. That's below Nerf standards. You know, we, we use a even 70 as Nerf standards. So $60, below 70 feet per second, and it was an inconsistent. I had a lot of shots going all the way down in the 50s. Especially as it was used. Because my my normal test session is two to three hundred shots. And this thing seemed to be getting kind of taxed by the end of that test session. So I don't know if maybe mine's a lemon. Could be. You know, these are mass produced. But this specific one started to show some erratic performance at the end of a 300 shot chronograph session. So something to note. And it did have some misfeeds, as you've seen live on camera. That's not me forcing that. It, it just happens here and there. It's not a non-stop thing, but it's enough that it'll happen probably once per drum. And then you'll have to back the drum up, fix it. And when it does that half-feed thing, it jams the drum and sometimes half-feeds the dart. So you'll have to force the drum back, clear the dart, and continue on. And... Thankfully, it's very easy to access everything here with the drum, and if you had to, you could just pull the foregrip forward and get rid of the drum and then clear it out that way. Because that is very, very intuitive. So, final opinion and conclusion here on the 509. It's their most expensive blaster that has a lot of potential. This thing could be an absolute HVZ you know, go-to. I mean, it really could. 30 rounds on board, semi-auto flywheel blaster, with a little bit of tweaking and modding, you could make this thing be a very, very nice platform. However, in stock form, I don't think that it's... It's no benefit to buy this over other drum-fed blasters, including Big Power Electric's own. Because I keep going back and thinking back to my 505 review. And yes, the, the numbers do get 100% confusing unless you keep one of the little, the little cards handy. And I do have to reference it, even though I've already reviewed these blasters. But with the 505, I had a very you know, nice feeling and a good perspective on that blaster in the end. I think that it was a solid choice, and it's less expensive than this by a little bit at least. And it performed well. So you would pick this over the 505 only because... You like the color scheme and you don't want to have to paint it. Because it does look sharp. I mean, it is very nice. It has, you know, good color scheme, in my opinion. It has good ergonomics overall. The uh, only thing I would m mention is that the uh, trigger guard and the grip guard would be a little bit confining if you had very, very large hands. I mean, again, I have big hands. I didn't find it to be an issue. And the grip is actually pretty comfortable. No stock point, so... 
nothing to say. It's very, it's very comfortable just to kind of whip the thing around and run around with. And it had so much potential. I was, I was probably, and you probably can even hear it and see it. I was a little bit let down by this, especially at a $60 price point. But what can you do? Big Power Electric probably is going to have, you know, more coming in the future. And I do have two more left to review. So check, check out my next two videos. I'm going to, I'll put these out in three days in a row. So hopefully you stick around and enjoy all the reviews. But the 509, I'm going to have to say, I would pass on this one. It, it has a lot of potential, but just didn't deliver. At least in my opinion. This is Mongoose Shakes saying thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.